Get it. <laughs> Get it, son. Wow, look at this. If you can't tell, all the kiddos are getting their goodie bags this morning. Blankets, I love it. Ready for church. I'm going to let this be done before I even get going. Oh my goodness. Now y'all know why we don't do this for adults. Here we go. Beth, you're a little big to get one, Beth. It's a little too tall there. I would love one. Is there any candy in it? Sweet. Why does mine have a dum-dum in it? I feel like somebody's trying to tell me something, don't you think? It's Christmas spirit, I'm a dum-dum. I got a Nutri-Grain bar and a dum-dum. That, I don't know what somebody's trying to tell me in that. So I'll, I'll do the color in later. The dum-dum may show up at some point. Well, swell. he's here. All right. More coming, guys. I love it. Can y'all tell it's Christmas time? Yay. Are we excited? One week from today is Christmas. We can't wait. Is everybody in the Christmas spirit? Got your houses all decorated, all ready to roll, ready for everything, right? All your Christmas lists are done. You've bought everything you need to. The Amazon man has had to change tires in your driveway because he has delivered so many packages to your house. You are ready to roll. Nice. Well, we are glad you guys have chosen to be with us today. Of anywhere you could have been, you chose to be here, and we say thank you. We're glad that you have enjoyed this so far, and I'm going to let you know, I'm going to be brief this morning. (laughs) That's a pastor telling you that. Um, We're going to continue our series, and I want to just keep walking through the stories that we've been walking through. We're in our series entitled The Big Give and Getting Wrapped Up in Christmas. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about the fact that this Christmas story that we're so used to every year, we're so used to reading, we're so used to knowing, there's so many parts of this that maybe we don't think about. Do you ever think about the fact that an angel appeared to probably about a 16-year-old girl and said, you're going to be pregnant, it's not going to be your husband, it's going to be God. And you're going to give birth to the Son of God. This was prophesied about. All the Old Testament prophets talk about it. Isaiah talked about it. Micah talked about it. Other prophets talked about the fact that there would come a day that this was going to happen. But reality was here for a young virgin by the name of Mary. We've unpacked the story over the last few weeks about how an angel appeared to Mary one night, the angel Gabriel, and he said, don't be afraid because when angels show up, you're afraid. So they always say, don't be afraid. The angel appeared to Mary, told her what was going to happen, also gave her a little bit of, hey, let me give you some proof of this. Your relative, potentially your cousin Elizabeth, who is much too old to be giving birth, is also pregnant, and she's in her sixth month. Mary immediately hastes, and she goes and she spends time with her relative Elizabeth, right up to the point that Elizabeth gives birth to a guy that we know as John the Baptist. She's probably there when John is born. Mary has seen all of this. We talked about last week the fact that After this happened, Mary went home. Now, I want you for just a minute to think about the fact that a young teenage girl, yeah, she's betrothed to be married, she's engaged, but that doesn't mean that they've consummated their marriage. They haven't done that. She's gone back home to her hometown. Now she's coming back three months pregnant. What do you think people said? All those of you that have been in school, those of you who have experienced it before, those of you that know others that have experienced all the looks, 
all the way people must have thought of Mary and Joseph. People must have had these looking down your nose looks at them saying, I can't believe this. I can't believe this happened. Oh, sure, it was God. How's that for an excuse? All the things that were said. And I love that the Bible says a couple of times that Mary pondered all these things in her heart. That meant she had a lot to think about. She had a lot to think about. I find it interesting that in the two books that we have in the Bible that record what we call the Christmas story, the book of Matthew, which Matthew was an eyewitness to everything that happened in those days and walked with Jesus and was one of his disciples. So the the Christmas story is there. It's also in another book called the book of Luke. Luke was a doctor who uh, interviewed people and put his book together and probably interviewed Mary herself and, and got the information and all the things in his book. But in both of those stories, not one time are we told anything about the time that Mary comes home. We know she's about three months pregnant. We're not told anything from that three months until that wonderful Uber drive on the back of a donkey to Bethlehem. It wasn't an Uber, in case you're wondering, all right? We're not really told anything. I wonder what life was like in the little town of Nazareth. I wonder what people were saying. We know Mary probably wasn't in high school, but we can imagine that if she was, I wonder what it was like for her. I wonder what it was like for Joseph, the looks, the thoughts. And then think about the things leading up to the pregnancy or leading up to the birth. We know what today looks like. Have you been to a gender reveal party lately? Anybody been to a gender reveal? Those weren't around when we found out that we were pregnant with our children, and I'm really glad because we didn't have money to drop into that along with everything else. I actually did just a little bit of research. I Googled it to see if anybody had recorded the most expensive gender reveal party ever. And I found, this is absolutely crazy. There was a couple in Dubai, the the Arab Emirate country in Dubai, who spent $100,000 on a gender reveal party. They put that it's a boy on this big tall building in Dubai, in Dubai in blue and put it up there. They spent $100,000 to say, it's, it's a boy. So $100,000 to get all your parents to buy blue diapers instead of pink diapers. But when I think about Mary, I wonder what that was like. Oh, she was about to have the most life-changing experience ever. But could she really celebrate? Oh, she could in her heart. She and Joseph knew because they had seen an angel. But that angel didn't show up everywhere they went. And when Mary walked out seven, eight, and nine months pregnant doing the typical pregnancy walk, there weren't angels going, it was God. No, she had to walk through it. She goes right up to this point of the trip to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph, we know they have to go to the origin or the, the city that Joseph's family is from, which is Bethlehem. It's, it's a pretty long walk from where they live in Nazareth. Typical in those days, and the research you can do, it probably took them somewhere around four days to seven days to get there. Now they go through some hill country, they make their way to Bethlehem. When they get there, we know the story, Joseph forgot to make reservations at the inn or something like that. They get there and there's no place for Mary to be able to go into the labor and delivery room. There's no preparations. There's no doctors and nurses. She gives birth like a lot of people did in those days, only in her case, she gave birth in a stable, more than likely a cave. And the pictures that we get of the manger that is wooden with the hay and the way that they probably prepared it, more than likely it was probably a trough carved out of stone. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but there Mary finds herself. Now you would imagine that, I know what it's like when someone has a baby. Everybody gets to tell everybody, we've had a baby, we've had a baby. Our grandson was born uh, about a year, year and a half ago, not too long, but our grandson was born right in the middle of COVID. And you know what that meant? That meant we couldn't go to the hospital when he was born. Now, we got pictures of us standing outside of the hospital room and our son holding him up to the window, and it was the coolest baby in the entire world, so it was good. And we were were outside the window, but there was part of me going, man, I want to be in there. I want to hold that little guy. I want to be part of this. Couldn't do it. Wanted to celebrate. Couldn't wait to get him home, and I've celebrated every day since, and I'm going to continue. But what about Mary and Joseph? Who are they going to announce it to? 
On top of that, she was giving birth to the king of kings, to the Lord of lords, to the one who was going to sit on the throne of David. There should be an announcement. There should be, there should be trumpeteers coming out and standing out in front and going, bruh, bruh, bruh. there's a king that's born. No. Mary finds herself in that cave giving birth. No announcement. Nobody coming to visit. Family's not driving in town. Things are not good. Who in the world is God going to choose to tell that a baby has been born? Who's he going to choose? We have two separate accounts. We have one in Matthew of the wise men who travel from the east. But we know if you look at it, that was not at the birth. Jesus was probably around two years old when the wise men came and traveled to see him. But the very first people, it's recorded in the book of Luke, and I want to read it to you in Luke chapter 2. The very first people to ever hear the announcement that Jesus was born, it wasn't the rich. It wasn't the people that had everything together. It was shepherds. What, what's the significance of shepherds? You know, I like to believe, and I think we see, shepherds were kind of common. Matter of fact, shepherds, these shepherds outside of Bethlehem, Bethlehem was only, or is only about six miles, five or six miles outside of Jerusalem. The temple is in Jerusalem. The shepherds that were watching the sheep nearby to Jerusalem, probably in the Bethlehem hills, they may have very well been watching the very sheep that would be sacrificed in the temple at some point. Well, it was kind of crazy. These shepherds were were given the job and the responsibility to watch over sheep, but they were also considered unclean people. They weren't even allowed to go and worship. When the temple choir would gather together and sing, there's joy in the house of the Lord, the shepherds couldn't participate. They had to stay in the fields. And yet, when God chose to announce, my son is born. He went to the lowliest of people, people that the world saw as maybe outcast, as people that didn't have everything together, and he said, we're going to tell them the news. Let let me read how the story goes to you. In Luke chapter 2, verse 8, Luke records it this way. He says, and there were shepherds, you're familiar with this, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night, doing what shepherds do. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified, because how should you be when angels show up? But of course, what does the angel say when you're scared? Don't be afraid, which I'm going to need an angel to tell me not to be afraid if an angel ever shows up, because I'm probably going to be terrified. (laughs) He says, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy Not just for you, but for everyone, for all the people. Did you know that the good news that the angels were proclaiming some 2,000 years ago is the same good news that we celebrate today? Oh, we know that Christmas is fun. We know that Christmas is, we get to get the gifts. And I even heard some weathermen say, we have a possibility of getting an inch of snow on Christmas. White Christmas. Woo! Isn't that exciting? Now, if that one fruity forecaster who says it's 12 inches is right, I'm in for that one because we need to be snowed in and not be able to move. Amen? But one inch is just annoying. Same good news. The good news that will cause great joy for everybody, for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is the Messiah, the Lord. I can just imagine the scene, the angels out, or excuse me, the shepherds out in the field, shepherds starting to graze, maybe lay down for the night. Angels show up, they're terrified, and the angels' first words are, don't be scared. And then they start to say, you won't believe what's happening. Of all the people in the entire world, of everybody that God could have told, we came to tell you. Mm. This will be a sign. 
Verse 12, this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. I, I love the, or, the original King James Version of the Bible when it says swaddling clothes. I don't know why, when I hear the word swaddling clothes, I just want to coo for a minute. The NIV is fine, but we're just wrapping this kid in cloths, right? We're wrapping them in cloths. That's typically what they would do. It'll be a sign. And then suddenly, you got one angel who is standing there saying, don't be terrified, I'm giving you good news, the Messiah is going to be born. And while they're done being terrified, listen to what the angel said, because one angel will scare the bejeebies out of you. Look what happens. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. That's um, more than one angel. So you think you were scared with one, all of a sudden the sky opens up and it's, oh, and they all start singing. I don't, they probably sang better than I just did. But. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. I can just imagine the scene, the first people that are ever going to hear about Jesus. They're people kind of like us. They're people a lot like us who we go throughout our lives. We, we do the things we're supposed to do. Some of us go to work every single day. Some of us work part-time. Some of us are looking for work. Some of us are retired. Some of us are just doing the normal things of life. That's what these shepherds were doing. The angels showed up and they said, I'm going to tell you the greatest news ever. Things are about to change. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, I'm, I'm pretty sure their first words weren't, let's go to Bethlehem. I'm pretty sure their first words were, did you see that? <laughs> did you see what I saw? That's where we get the song, do you see what I, that's probably what it was. Did you see that? When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. And you know what they found? They found exactly what the angels said. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. This announcement was something incredible. Angels showing up, announcing the birth of the king. Things are going to be different. And, and see if we can put this into some practicality that maybe we kind of miss in the Christmas story sometimes. But think about the fact that if I told you, a lot of you decided to come to church this morning, I'm excited you are here, but what if I told you that your profession would not allow you to come to church this morning? Had a, a gentleman walk in this morning, he had a hat on, and he said, is it okay for me to wear a hat in here? And I went, heck yeah, come on in, man. You'll be fine. Can you imagine if we excluded everybody who's wearing hats? You're out, Connor. All right, we're good. All right. What, what if we did that? What, what if in our church we said, yeah, all the left-handed people can't come to church on Sunday mornings? There's only going to be like six of you, so we're fine, all right? All right, I'm teasing. If you got a left, that's great. It's fantastic. You ought to be a good basketball. But anyway, all right. What, what if we said, if you wear jeans, you can't come to church on Sundays? What, what, if, what if we said you're excluded? You, you can't be part of this. You're the very ones. You're the very ones that God said, I'm doing something special. I'm going to do something that's been talked about for years, and I want to do it in you. I want you to see it. The shepherds show up to the manger. They find it just exactly the way that the angels had said they were going to find it. The significance of this, they couldn't go to the temple. The Holy of Holies was reserved for the priest, and all of a sudden, a manger <laughs> became the Holy of Holies. It became the place that God resided. 
No longer did you have to go somewhere to find God. No longer did you have to purchase a sacrifice. And if you, you, you didn't have enough money, you'd have to purchase doves or purchase a lamb or purchase a goat or whatever it may be. You didn't have to do that anymore. Because of this baby in a manger, because God said, I am sending my son to this earth, we no longer have to have anybody between us and God. Do you know that this morning you have as much right and ability to talk to God as I do? As anybody else in this room? If you're hurting today, do you know that you can talk directly to God? If you're, if you're having a, a terrible time, God is right there. You can talk to him. He's just as here today as he was in that manger. And everything changed. The story goes on. When they had seen him, this is so cool to me. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And I love that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in their heart. What's the first thing the shepherds did when they found out about Jesus? Do you know what they did? They went and told other people. They went and said, you have got to experience what we experienced. You have got to believe in what we believe in. The Bible unfolds the story of this baby who we know is born in a manger that we celebrate at this time of the year. The Bible unpacks a story that this being the very son of God, that himself, he lived a perfect life. He had to. He was God. Oh, he was in every point tempted just like we are, but he didn't sin. He lived a perfect life, and then one day, we know the stories, one day when he was falsely accused and arrested and beaten, he was ultimately hung on a cross, and that cross that he hung on was for one reason, and that was so that you and I would not have to spend eternity separated from him, that we could experience the grace and the love of God. It makes the verse we read last week of John 3.16 come alive. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him, that's believing that, that puts forth moving forward. Whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. All because of the manger. The shepherds, I like this in verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Now something that I find very interesting in this is that when the angels showed up, do you know what it said they were doing? They were praising and saying glory to God. Now the shepherds are going out and praising and glorifying God. Do you know what that means? Do you know that that means that every time you praise God and you share God with other people, that you're an angel? (laughs) Some of you are looking at your mamas going, told you. That's right. Actually, the word angel means messenger of God. So every single time that you share about God and you praise and you glorify God, you're spreading the same word that was spread back then. That's, that's, that's my uh, encouragement to you today. Don't, don't just look at the Christmas season as a time that you gather together in Christmas lights and decorations and trees and presents and everything else, but make Christmas this year about praising God and glorifying God. This is one of our favorite times of the year and services of the year. This is our last Sunday meeting of the year. In a few minutes, all the kids that are sitting there and you guys are being so awesome and your little goodie bags have been great. The dum-dums must be working. But um, all those things have been great. But here in a few minutes, it's going to snow in our building and we're going to throw snowballs at each other. So we're going to have a lot of, yeah, there they go. Now I got them. All right, now I got them back. That is for the children. Any of you adults that can throw a 95 mile an hour fastball, do not throw a snowball at me. All right, I have campus safety here and it'll take you out. (laughs) Tonight we're going to do something really cool. Tonight we're going to come back together. It's, again, one of my favorite times. Tonight we're going to come back together and we're going to have a candlelight worship 
time together. It's not going to be a traditional candlelight service. It's going to be candlelight, and then we're going to worship together, and we're going to do exactly what the shepherds did 2,000 years ago. We're, to, we're going to glorify, and we're going to praise God, and we're going to tell people what God did. And if you have not experienced what God did for you, today is the day that you can. You can give him your life. He can change your life, both now and forever. And I am glad to be a part of a church that does things like that. Can, can I give y'all a couple of ways that we praise and glorify God around here? Those of you that are owners and regular attenders here at Living Water, you guys are part of something incredible. Those of you that are guests, just jump in, be a part of it. I talked to a couple this morning that I went, hey, is it your first Sunday here? They said, no, we've been coming for nine weeks. We're in a life group and we love it here. And I went, oh, it's good to meet you. It's my first Sunday. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> dum dum. I love what God's doing. We've had opportunities this year to be able to praise and glorify God because of the way that you guys have given. We've been able to take the monies that you've given and give back in our community and do incredible things. We've been able to provide opportunities like this morning. And, and I want to, I'm just going to finish and I want to share a couple of things with you. And this is not to brag on our church. This is to brag on the Jesus that you guys serve. Just a week, week and a half ago, we were able to host the storehouse uh, here in our community. Over 2,000 children got Christmas presents because of people like you and other churches and other places in our community, and we host that right here every year. I think I heard that 111 people prayed to receive Christ last weekend. Come on, Jesus. That, that's just part of the story. It's just part of it. We've been able to, uh, some of you guys have given cars to our church this year, and we've been able to bless people. Some of you have given in other ways. Some of you have uh, stayed in contact with people that were in the lowliest and the most hurtful place. We were able to buy a Bible for someone who was in prison. We were able to support them and be part of their life. We've done that multiple times over. We've been able to invest in schools in our community. Just the other day, several of us were able to go and, and uh, provide a, a meal for all the teachers and staff over at Apple Valley Middle School just to say Merry Christmas to them, and they really liked us catering Moe's to them. It was great. All kinds of stuff. Some of our life groups have decided to individually invest in people and schools and helping out. We've seen some of our groups get together and say, we're going to support the teachers. We're going to provide snacks for them. We're going to provide drinks for them, the right kind of drinks for them during the day while they're teaching. And we're going to support them throughout the year. The other day, we had a fantastic idea given. And we were able to go to a local school and contacted their, um, their uh, bookkeeper, their data manager. I know her really well. She carries my last name. Um, and we did something really cool because of you guys. We found out how much was on the overdue lunch balance for the entire school. And we wrote a check and we paid off the lunch balance for the entire school. Oh, you think it's cool. Let me read something to you. Let me, let me read something to you. And I, I'm going to do this. This is going to be so cool. I got, a, I got a letter this week from a second grade teacher from that school. And I want you to... Second grade... Second grade, listen to this. I want to express my sincere gratitude to you all for the way you blessed one of my students this Christmas season. This child has had a lunch balance of over $50 that has been carried from the beginning of the year. Her mom has managed to pay less than $10 on it as the child reports that mom really has no money and no finances. The child has had so much anxiety, a second grader, the child has had so much anxiety over this situation and has been really sad to see others get to buy an ice cream occasionally. And she knew that she wouldn't be able to since she had a balance left. Each week she got a new note home about the balance that she owed and I could see the anxiety in her face and in her reactions to having that reminder every week. The day she got the debt note with a colored piece of paper in it that said the families of living water have paid off your lunch balance. She and I both knew this was different. She opened it and opened it here in front of me and looked at it and with pure joy and excitement and relief on her face, it was so awesome to see. She teared up and she said, this is amazing. Last Friday, 
she was able to buy a 50 cent ice cream for the very first time this year. Thank you for what your church has done. Oh, I would take the time, but I'm not going to spend too much of it because there's snow and snowballs to throw. I've got other letters in here of people that said, I was without hope. I didn't know what we were going to do. And then someone walked in and said, hey, your church is going to take, take care of our power bill for us. We didn't know how we were going to sacrifice. We didn't have money for groceries, but now we do. Thank you. All the stories that I could read, the stories that I can tell, and the ways that we get to praise and glorify God just like a bunch of shepherds in a field. And yes, I am proud to call Living Water the church that I attend and the church that I love. And I am proud of you. So as we end out 2022... Here in a few minutes, Kyle's going to come out. He's going to give you a couple of announcements about things that are going on tonight. Also know that, listen, I've heard it. I've gotten contacts from people. I've heard from other, other uh, places that have said, I can't believe you're not going to meet and have church next Sunday morning because it's Christmas Sunday. And guess what? We prayed about it and we decided that we were going to let you be able to make your choice, but we're not going to be open next Sunday morning. We want you to be home and enjoy your family and, and be with them, open presents, sing worship music together, go out and the field and I don't know sing glory to God get some angels whatever you need to do we're not going to meet next week this is our Christmas service we want you to enjoy your family and your time together and it's okay if you think that you should have it then that's cool that's all right we're not going to it's all right but then the following Sunday is the first Sunday of the year and it's going to be really cool did y'all know 2023 is in like a week two weeks did y'all know that none of y'all thought we was going to make it through 2020 and here we are in 2023 and by the way, if anybody makes any announcements about a pandemic, we're no longer participating. All right? So 2023, New Year's coming. All right? Let's see what God does. Here's what I want you to do. Um, if you'll do me a favor, everybody just close your eyes for a second. I'm going to pray. When I finish praying, Kyle's going to come out. Then we're going to invite the kiddos up here, and we're going to have some fun, and then I'm going to encourage you to be back tonight. Okay? Let me pray. God, I love you. I pray that you take what we have shared today through worship, through music, through a message, through reading part of the Christmas story this morning, through the reminder, Jesus, that the very first people that you ever spoke to were people just like us, people that, that just live normal lives, maybe people that sometimes felt unclean and unworthy and undeserving, and yet you showed up and you said, that's the ones I'm going to tell. God, thank you for that. Thank you for telling us. Thank you for letting us be a part of an incredible story this year. Thank you for letting us be storytellers and help us to continue that. May this next year be a year that we move forward for you, that we tell even more people, we reach even more people in our community and around the world and tell them about the love of Jesus. God, thank you. We love you. In your name we pray.